So we were supposed to go spearfishing today, but the boat that we were supposed to take had an engine issue and we couldn't get it out. But took the jet skis, we came to this beach. Apparently there's supposed to be a bunch of like sea turtles and stingrays here. We're gonna go take a little dip, see if we can find any. Oh my God, it's so cute. It's little hermit crabs. This one's so tiny. This is the smallest hermit crab I've ever seen. <gasps> wow, they're so tiny. Look at them go. How beautiful! Alright guys, here with Heather. Woo we're gonna go look for turtles. Okay, we're gonna swim over there. We suspect that maybe the boats are there because turtles are there. Alright, ready? Okay. We to the beach looking for sea turtles, I came across this beautiful red cushion sea star. Look at all the little spikes that it has on them. These guys have the ability to regenerate their limbs. Not only that, but in some cases, when they lose a limb, that limb could actually regenerate into a whole new starfish. That's like if we lost an arm or a leg, then a whole new person grows out of that. That's wild. I love coming across these beautiful sea stars, and I'm just going to lay them right back down here where I found them. The beach we're swimming to is a hangout for green sea turtles. Green sea turtles have been around for millions of years, and since we're going to be spending a lot of time underwater in this video, I'm going to share everything that I know about them. How cute is that? They're so tiny! Aww! How about two? Alright, we're getting closer. So cute! I only saw one. We're getting closer, it seems. Alright, we're going to keep going. I just want to remind you guys that while you're snorkeling to always be on the lookout for boat traffic. In a lot of remote locations, there aren't buoys that separate swimmers from boat traffic, so you always have to be aware of your surroundings. Holy crap, this boat just charged in. Definitely have to be careful. Be good. That boat right there. See it? Hey guys, just wanted to thank Electric Bikes for sponsoring this video. Have you ever received one of those gifts that are just like jaw dropping, the best gift ever? Well, if you're looking for that kind of effect this holiday season, Electric Bikes will impress even the hardest person to shop for on your list. There are so many e-bikes to choose from, but Electric has e-bikes for everyone in the family, including the Expedition Cargo e-bike and the ultra accessible XP trike. These bikes are the perfect gift for anyone from your grandmother to your crazy friend that drives through mangroves and is slipping and sliding all over sand. They start at just $799. Plus you can get hundreds of dollars in free accessories when you purchase this holiday season at electricebikes.com. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C ebikes.com. This e-bike is so fun. I take it off road. I take it to the grocery store. If you live in a city, I would especially recommend it. You know, cities and their parking. And if you have an e-bike, it just makes it that much easier. The first time I rode an e-bike, I was a little nervous because, you know, they go pretty fast, but it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And I've just been having so much fun with them. I got two accessories for this one. I got a larger seat so that I could be more comfortable. And then I got this really cool bike lock and attaches straight to the frame. No matter who you buy for, you don't have to worry about assembly because it comes fully assembled. The only thing you have to do is adjust the seat and put in the handlebars and that's it. It's also foldable so you can store it in smaller places. I am so happy with this e-bike. I am having so much fun with it. Guys, you can get hundreds of dollars in free accessories with any electric e-bike purchase this holiday, including America's best-selling e-bike, the XP30, which is the one that I have here. Visit electricebikes.com to find the electric model for you. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C ebikes.com. All right, guys, now back to my video. Sea turtles travel thousands of miles in search for food. Even though they travel such far distances, when it's time for females to lay their eggs, they somehow navigate back to the same beach where they were hatched themselves. There, the sea turtle will dig a hole and lay her eggs deep in the sand. Another one. 
There's another one here. Oh, let's see if we can find more. Alright, so I see like four turtles. I don't know if that's a good amount or not. Apparently, the Heather Red is that there should have been like a bunch of turtles. What was that? No way! Oh, he has a sea turtle there. Let's go. See if we can get him. Not get him, but <laughs> get a look at him. Did you know that whether a sea turtle becomes male or female depends on the temperature of the sand that their egg incubated in? If the sand is warmer, then you'll get more female hatchlings. And if the sand is cooler, you'll get more male hatchlings. Once the eggs are hatched, they have to crawl out of the sand and make their way to the ocean. Not all of the baby turtles make it to the ocean. Some of them get distracted by light pollution, causing them to crawl in the wrong direction, and others are eaten by birds, crabs, and other predators. Even the ones that do make it to the water still have to worry about predators in the water, such as fish and sharks. It's a tough life for a little sea turtle, but things will get easier once he's bigger. They are primarily herbivores. Their diet consists of seagrass and algae, which they graze on in shallow coastal waters. This diet is crucial in maintaining the health of seagrass beds and coral reefs, integral to the ocean's ecosystem. You guys see that big barracuda? I heard it. <laughs> when you go out snorkeling, make sure that you're not wearing anything shiny, because barracudas are attracted to shiny things because they think it's a fish. So if you're wearing something that they think looks like a fish, then there's a higher chance that they're going to bite you. What the heck is this guy? He's staring right at me. This is kind of creepy. Oh, I'm not happy that I'm wearing silver earrings. Maybe that's what's attracting this damn barracuda. These turtles are remarkable divers. They can hold their breath for several hours while resting or sleeping underwater. Typically, they sleep at night, nestled in seagrass beds or wedged under rock ledges for protection. These turtles have the potential of growing to be huge. Some grow up to five feet long and can weigh as much as 700 pounds. That's like a small car. It's pretty incredible how large they can get. It takes these turtles ages to grow up. We're talking 20 to 50 years just to reach sexual maturity. <laughs> These turtles are protected under international law because of their vulnerable status. Conservation efforts focus on protecting nesting sites and reducing bycatch in fisheries. Unfortunately, they face endangerment due to human activities, such as habitat destruction, pollution, accidental capture in fishing gear, and the illegal trade of eggs and meat have all contributed to their decline. Swimming with wildlife such as sea turtles, I always find that I have the best experience if I just kind of stay still or swim very slowly, never chase them, never swim towards them. You can swim parallel to them, 
but I would never swim towards them because they take that as a threatening behavior. The best thing you can do is just stay chill, don't chase them, don't try to pet them, and just let them come to you. I definitely don't think this is natural behavior for these sea turtles. I think they're coming really close because people tend to feed them and that's why they're so comfortable because they, they spend a lot of time around humans. I don't suggest ever feeding any type of wildlife. I think it actually hurts them in the end. So if you see the sea turtles, wonderful, but they're more than capable of hunting for their own food. We're so lucky to be able to have this experience swimming with these beautiful sea turtles. And I really think it's important to highlight the efforts that conservationists around the world have been doing in order to make experiences like this possible. I love you. In various parts of the world, there's been an increase in the number of green sea turtle nesting sites and hatchlings, and it's because of the protection of nesting beaches and increased awareness about the importance of conserving these areas. Local communities, especially in coastal areas, are increasingly involved in conservation efforts. Educational programs have raised awareness about the importance of protecting sea turtles, and that's led to greater community support and participation in conservation activities. Efforts like beach patrols, fencing to protect nests from predators, and controlled hatching environments have led to higher survival rates of hatchlings. Many countries have also implemented laws and regulations that protect sea turtles from hunting and exploitation. Conservation of sea turtles has become a global effort with countries collaborating through treaties and agreements like the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species to protect these animals across national borders. Understanding the life and struggles of green sea turtles is crucial in our efforts to protect them. As guardians of the ocean, it's our responsibility to ensure their survival for generations to come. Numerous organizations and facilities specialize in the rescue, rehabilitation, and release of injured sea turtles. These programs have saved thousands of turtles, giving them a second chance at life. I am so appreciative of all of their efforts, and it's just so wonderful to see species like this bounce back and have hope that they'll be around for generations to come. Remember to support conservation efforts and spread awareness about these remarkable creatures. I think we're going to take the dead skis back to the dock and just see what everybody's up to.